if you study the ions of the body, particularly if you're studying the micro ions of the body, you get into fields such as channelomics, electrophysiology, and channelopathy, just to begin with, if you have interest in these, these are the search words you can go into. There's a lot more, but this is what I want to speak of to begin our study of the science of pendulums. Because especially with a field of channelopathy, which is the study of the diseases and the reasons why the ion channels of the body shut down, one of the greatest and most common reasons that the ion channels of the body shut down is due to venom. Uh, venom from snakes and scorpions and spiders. One of the byproducts of that venom is they tend to shut down the ion channels of the cells so that the cells cannot recognize the ions which keep them alive. Many of the cells of the body do not look for nutrients, but they look for the ions of those nutrients and minerals. And if they cannot recognize them, then they cannot eat, and if they cannot eat, then they cannot live. So a lot of venoms, and spiders in particular, will the venom will cause the cells to no longer recognize the ions that they need to survive, and therefore the cells of the body will begin to rot, die and rot. Particularly this applies to another form of ion activity in the body, which is the macro ion signal. And what this is, is a synchronization it's a chorus of interaction between all of the ion active cells of the body. There's a signal that runs through the body. It extends beyond the body in kind of an aura or a field. It extends six inches from the fingers, about three inches from the toes and the spine, and a half inch from the rest of the body. This is a field of ion activity that can detect anything within that field that the body is favorable towards or non-favorable towards and it will send a response back through the body just as a chorus but because of the poisons in our environment and the poisons that we consume particularly thinking about our environment with the vaccinations the fluoride the chlorine the pollution and our food with our pesticides herbicides fungicides gmos which have a lot of strains of viruses in them uh, preservatives uh, flavor enhancers food coloring a lot of toxic things are in our foods and then we love our pop and a pop is one of the most deadly things that a person can consume because of the high acid content that is in it, the caffeine which burns out the adrenal system, the, uh, the food coloring is no, not good for you, the uh, sugar in it will feed candida and cause a poisoning from candida in your body, plus a lot of the high fructose corn syrup is from GMO sugars, and then you get into the processed foods that we like, and with all of the bio-unavailable minerals, vitamins, and nutrients that we consume, what happens is we are literally poisoning, consuming venom. And the first thing that goes is not the individual cells, but the, the macro ion signal, signal goes. And as a matter of fact, from the people that I have dealt with and tested, in most children, the macro signal is still alive and well, the macro signature. But by the time they reach the age of 20, only about 5% of people above the age of 20 is the macro signal still active. And this would be people who continue with a uh, healthy diet, uh, organics, body cleansing. But the absence of the macro ion signal in a body is a sure sign that our suicidal diets are having their effect and death is beginning to set in. And that is one of the first things that goes. Now in order for me to maintain the macro signal in my body, I have to eat about an 80% alkaline diet consisting of fruits and vegetables and as much chlorophyll as I can get. I eat a lot of spinach, um, grind it up and then take it with me when I'm on the road almost all of what I consume is organic so I can stay away from the chemicals the meats I eat very little red meat most of what I eat is salmon uh, mackerel sardines fish 
and wild caught and as healthy as I can get it. I drink uh, anion water, regular water that I induce anions into. I do not drink coffee. I do not drink pop. I do drink green tea in the mornings. And then to cleanse my body from the impurities that I do get, I give myself one coffee enema a day, sometimes followed by a soda enema. And then on the weekends, I give myself a uh, ion foot cleanse to draw more toxins out of the body. And because of that, my ion signal is still active. Now let's talk about how this relates to our pendulums. If you hold out your finger and you point towards something, you might be able to see that your hand does not stay perfectly straight, but there's actually shaking, there's vibration, there's inconsistent movements. And particularly you can see this, and you have to pardon my hands, I was working on my truck today. Particularly you can see this if you're using a laser pointer and you point it toward the wall. What you will see is a bunch of random movements. And a lot of these movements, let me just simply describe them this way. A lot of the movements that you will see will have a left hand turn to them. No matter where they're moving, the movement will actually have a slight left turn to it. Some will be straight, but we can ignore those. Some of the movements that you will see will have a slight right hand turn to them. This is just the nature of how it comes out. The uh, brain is sending random signals down your arm to keep the arm straight, and that random signal is producing about as much left hand turning as it is right hand turning. This is normal. But if there is an interface between the random movements of the arm and the macro ion signal, the macro ion signal will influence this ratio between left and right and will change it so that there will be more left or right. And here is where your pendulum comes into, into view because if the pattern down your arm is equal, left and right, then there will be no particular pattern or movement distinguishable with a pendulum. But if there is more right than left, that will be demonstrated with the pendulum. Or if there is more left than right, the pendulum will reveal that because it will start to take on a left hand or counterclockwise movement. Some, well, similar to this here. There we go. And there is nothing magical about a pendulum. The thing that's, that it's doing is revealing if there is something that's influenced the ratio of the movements that is going down the arm. And what happens here is as the macro ion signal goes out and with my hands and with somebody who's healthy it's about six inches beyond the hands that this signal will go out and if I come within contact or within six inches of something that my body wants or doesn't want the ion signal that goes through my body will interrupt this perfect pattern and I suspect that what happens is as the ion signal spirals down the arm that it synchronizes the synapse there's an interface with the synapse because the synapse of the muscles it goes from chemical to electrical chemical to electrical chemical to electrical chemical to electrical that's how it moves down down the, the uh, string of nerves but if there is an electrical spiral that goes down the arm then as it goes from chemical to electrical the electricals will synchronize as that um, electrical spiral hits hits those the synapse the synapse will synchronize and that will cause this instead of being perfectly random it will it will tend to have either more rights or more lefts and that then is what you're picking up with the pendulum you're not after spirits you're not at trying to communicate with the dead uh, this is something that I never do because I don't want any spirits inter interfering with the what I what I'm doing all I want to know is if there has been an influence between the right and left vibrations or the shaking of my hand um, if you if you notice when I do it you'll notice that sometimes it looks like I'm intentionally causing it to move left or right counterclockwise or clockwise 
and what is happening is actually the, the, the nerves of the body will, will start to synchronize and it will look like like I am intentionally doing it and this is one thing that, that a somebody who's using this really has to be careful of because it's very easy to to uh, inadvertently subconsciously do it yourself it's really something where you have to just let the nerves fire the way they want and be interfaced by the macro ion signal now what happens then is that by holding the pendulum and then using my other hand to reach out within six inches of something the pendulum will reveal if my body is having an a relationship to to that uh, object now most of the people that I know a favorable response from the macro ion signal will be a right hand uh, more more of a right hand movement a clockwise that the uh, pendulum will begin to move clockwise which means that the body likes what it's coming in contact with or within the range of some people the favorable is actually left but a person will find out through testing to find out if they are as most people are right and some people are left but that's that all tends to be the uh, the individual but again we do not use these for contacting spirits or finding lost keys or getting a hold of a medium or, or reaching your subconscious all we're trying to use this for is to determine if something has influenced this ratio so we're not into spiritualism or spiritism with this this is only used for science to to test the macro ion signal you can also test this by using a laser pointer and pointing it at the wall but that's a lot more cumbersome because what you'll see with a laser pointer if you're pointing it at a wall and if your body's having a response that there's a random movement and there's a slight change of these and I noticed it for myself about every two seconds let's say I'm this for me would be an unfavorable that my body does not like what I'm what my hands have come within six inches of there be a random movements and about every two inches there will be a kind of a movement like that and a random for about two seconds and then this arc of something like that that's what I noticed with a laser for me or if my body wants something about every two seconds I'll get this right hand movement a distinct right hand arc why it's an arc like that I don't know if it has to do with gravity or if it has to do with the way the nerves are firing down the arm in order to keep the muscles up I don't know but it is an arc and it comes about every two seconds but instead of having to wait for this the uh, the two second arc you can just actually just hold a pendulum and the pendulum will tell you if something has influenced the ratio of rights to lefts and so that's how the macro ion signal interfacing with the synapse will be revealed through the movement of a pendulum okay now let's look at these fancy contraptions that I have here these this here is my the most common pendulum that I use all it is is a small rock it doesn't matter what kind of rock it is um, it just has to be a weight because we're not after anything spiritual we're just after detecting uh, a change in the in the uh, random patterns of the of the nerves the synapse of the arm to see if there's any uh, in, increase of right or left hand movements so this is about what I I'll, I'll weigh this here and then post the weight if I get a chance and all this is a rock a little bit of tar this is actually butyl here and this is dental floss that I have attached to it and when I use a pendulum a lot of people that I see on the internet that use uh, pendulums they they get these real fancy things like a plumb bob has got a point on it and a chain that goes on it a metal chain that goes on it and they hold it about a foot down I think that's really a time waster it takes too long to get it moving uh, I got things to do and things to accomplish so what I do with it is I I use a cheap little pendulum like this I choke up on it I don't think I've got what maybe about an inch of inch of line there and then I hold it down so I hold it really tight and that way I can just tell what kind of uh, if my body has synchronized any of the movements in the synapse and the reason that I hold it tight is because if I'm checking people if I'm checking their minerals or I'm checking for people's allergies or I, sometimes I have to do a lot of a lot of testing with it 
So I don't have time for, to hold a big pendulum and sit there for a minute or two and see what it does. I hold a small one and then when I'm going from object to object, I will just reach my fingers down there and stop it so that I can start all over. And oftentimes if I'm testing one particular thing, um, I will look to see if I have a steady movement. If I don't, if I'm not satisfied with it, if I know for sure about how my body is responding, I will test it over and over again to see what's going on. But that's how I use it, a very, very short length and something very, very inexpensive. Here's another rock about the same material, about the same weight. This one here was made real easily. It's the same type of stone. I just picked it up out of a driveway and put the dental floss on there and wrapped it around a bunch with electrical tape and it works just fine. So very, very inexpensive. Now, these have been used for years, especially the most, more expensive ones, people that are into, into uh, witchcraft or New Age have used them for years, but there's also non-spiritual uses. Um, there's an old wives' tale that a woman who's pregnant can hold her wedding ring on a chain over her womb and it would tell her if the child was a male or a female because the body responds favorably to the hormones of the opposite sex and unfavorably to the hormones of the same sex. This, for this reason, it's been used in the poultry industry for many, 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 many years. I talked to an elderly lady and she said, yeah, we've used those for years. And what they would do is uh, the, the lady tester, as the fertilized eggs were coming down the conveyor belt, she would hold a pendulum over them. And because the body responds favorably to the hormones of the opposite sex, they wanted to re weed out the roosters. And so she would hold the pendulum over each egg as it came down the conveyor belt. If she got a favorable reading to any of the eggs, that meant there was a rooster in there and they destroyed it or set it aside. But that way they could separate the hens from the roosters in the, uh, in the uh, fertilized eggs that were coming down the conveyor belt. A person can also, for testing this, um, take a strand of hair, the root end of it, and then test, put it, either touch it with one hand and hold the pendulum out, or put, just put the pendulum over it, and if the hormones of the opposite sex are in that hair, the body will want it. It's favorable toward it. If it's hormones from the same sex, the body will have an unfavorable reading to it. So this has been used for many, many years. It's nothing new. And remember again, we are not here to find out anything spiritual. We are here to find out what the macro ion signal is telling us, whether it wants something or doesn't want something. Now, if you take a pendulum like this and you hold it over, let's say salt, for example, and it does not move, positive or negative, does not move at all, this probably means that your macro signal is shut down because you've consumed a bad diet and you're going to need to go on a body cleansing, you're going to need to go to organic foods, you're going to need to maybe do like I do, a daily coffee enema. You're going to have to change your diet to cleanse your body out to get the macro signal back because it will come back if you start eating right and and doing what your body needs needs it to do it will come back so if you don't get any movement off of this it's not a spiritual issue it's a diet issue and you're going to need to change your diet now the shapes the shape of a pendulum is actually important you want it to be fairly round symmetrical this way and the reason for that is if you're holding this above an object. Now remember the ion signature goes six inches from the fingers but if you hold something like a pendulum in your hands it will actually extend it further. So this will actually be an extension of your hands so if you're holding this over salt within six inches of it your body if it wants it will be favorable. Now for most people it will be clockwise like this. If your body does not want it it will be unfavorable which for most people will be counterclockwise like this. Now, if the body is neutral on it, it will do one of two things. It will either go back and forth, just back and forth, back and forth, no pattern at all, or it will go clockwise and then neutral, 
It, it will go clockwise and then neutral, then counterclockwise, then neutral, then clockwise. And it's kind of thinking about it. Maybe I want it. Maybe I don't. Maybe I want it. Maybe I don't. And the reason that you do not want a oval or anything that's not symmetrical is because if you're holding it over an object, the shape of the pendulum will actually cause well, it will actually swing in the direction of the shape of the pendulum. Uh, if it's going to give a back, back and forth motion, if there's like a, a little pile of salt here, and if your if your pendulum is a, is longer this way, it will swing the length of the pendulum instead of going any other direction. It will go this way, and so you want this thing to be about as round as possible. Now, here is something that. A very interesting phenomenon. There's a lot. Of, well, there's a lot of interesting things about um, the pendulum and about the, the phenomenon of it. But if you have, let's say, you poured salt in a string of on this paper, the body will, the pendulum will tend to go the length of the salt. If it's neutral, it will go the length of the salt up and down, up and down the length of the salt. And if you turned the salt so that it was lined this way, the pendulum would go that way down the salt. Now the thing that gets really interesting is if you have a line of salt here and you hold the pendulum off to your side and then you take your other hand, I should be this hand here, and you put it over that line of salt. This pendulum, which you can have over your over the side, will swing this direction, even if it's to your side, even if it's three feet over, it will swing that way. And if you turn this, and you have your left hand over this, the pendulum three feet over in the other direction will swing in the direction of that line of salt. How it does that, I do not know, but it's kind of fun to to test it out to keep moving this around and have your left hand over this and see what direction the, the right hand uh, moves but it follows this so that's why you want a symmetrical as much as possible you want a symmetrical um, pendulum something very very similar to that some other interesting features about this is if you use a laser pointer and I spoke of that before and you point toward a wall and the body is favorable towards something most of the time it will be a right hand movement especially about every two seconds now the interesting thing is if you point the laser toward the floor and it wants it it will be the right hand movement clockwise but if you point the laser toward the ceiling something very interesting happens it becomes counterclockwise opposite of what you see here and somehow how the body reacts as far as its movements is directly related to the gravitational pull I always thought that if it was clockwise here it would be clockwise on the wall which it would be and it would be clockwise on the ceiling but this is not the case it's counterclockwise on the ceiling and it's just just fascinating to think about okay now let's talk about the practical uses of a pendulum now remember I said before that the ion charge the ion signature that goes out from a healthy body will extend six inches out from the hands three inches out from the toes and the spine and about half inch from the rest of the body that means if I hold the pendulum like this that will extend it will extend almost six inches beyond the pendulum. This ion charge will grow, go through plastic or glass. So let's say I have a glass jar or something and I want to find out if my body wants it or not. I can, well take, if it's got a metal lid, I need to set it on its side because the metal will, the, the ions will pick up the metal, which you don't want to do. So you lay the thing on its side and you hold the pendulum over it and if the body wants it, it will swing favorable, which for me is, is clockwise. If the body does not want it, it's counterclockwise. Or I can take this in one hand, and with my other hand, just reach out like if I'm shopping in a store and I want to see if my body wants this. I can reach my other hand out and come within six inches of it, or just touch the glass, and then test the other hand to see if my body is wanting it. The same as with plastic. If you're testing a frozen object, ions do not go well through frozen objects. 
So what you're going to want to do is to take your uh, the hand that you're not holding the pendulum in, and let's say it's a bag of frozen peas. So you take your left hand and just touch the bag of frozen peas and hold it on there, just a little bit of pressure, and just long enough so that the uh, warmth from your fingers will cause a little bit of the peas that's inside the bag to thaw. And that way, with the other hand, you can do the ion test. Because as soon as the, the little bit of peas on the other side of that bag, as soon as they thaw a little bit, then the ion reading will flow. Now, because the macro ion signature runs through the body back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, if you come within six inches of somebody else, or you take somebody by the hand, your macro signature will synchronize with theirs. And as it goes back through them, it will come back and the signature, the signal that you get will be their signal, not yours, because it's going from one end to the other. Your body will literally assume that, that their body is part of yours now because you're within the ion range of them. So what this helps with is you can actually take somebody by the hand and then use the pendulum to test over foods and objects to see what their response to it is because there's a lot of cases where um, people are needing health help and you can test for minerals you can test their minerals you can test for the vitamins and you can also test for allergies here is a common use for the pendulum is because there's oftentimes children who become ill and parents do not know if the child is allergic to something that's in the house so you can take everything that the child is eating, the soaps that their clothes are being uh, washed in, the fabric softeners, the hairsprays, the detergents, the chemicals, um, and lay them out. And take the child, if it's a small child, just take them in your arms. If it's an older child, take them by the hand, and then use the pendulum over the products that they're exposed to. And if they're allergic to it, the body will give a strong negative it depended upon how your negatives read but for me it would be a strong negative that way now an allergy what sometimes is is mistaken for an allergy like in a food item is just something that the child has consumed too much of but if it is a case where it's always negative to that particular food item then it's most likely an allergy and even if you're testing the child and you get a strong negative off of any product whether it be soap detergent fabric softener all the chemicals that are in the house, um, even you might want to test the carpet if the carpets are new. Um, if you're getting a strong negative, then what this does is it raises a red flag that this might be something that the child is allergic to. I had um, uh, three cats and one of them became sick uh, and it correlated to it about the same time we had changed some of the food over and I didn't know if it was the case if it was the food or not so I took one cat one of the healthier ones in my hands in my arms and I tested this over the food and it was positive the cat the cat's body liked the food I took another cat that was healthy and it was positive over the food then I took the one that wasn't doing so good and it came out a big negative so I knew that that particular cat was allergic to the new food that we had gotten so we switched the food out and the cat got better so this can be used not only for people but it can also be used for animals to finding out what they are allergic to or for minerals if they're low in minerals um, this if you uh, one of the things that I do is I take uh, like a stick like a painting stick a stir stick and I put um, calcium magnesium sodium potassium um, zinc copper and iron and just tape them on the board on the stick and that way I can if I'm testing somebody I can take that stick with me to their house and just take them by the hand and just go down that stick to see if they're high or low in anything also if you're testing on a countertop or something like that it, it would be helpful to first test the countertop and the reason for this is most countertops or tables have screws that come up from the underside and if you get a negative reading on something it's possible that the body is actually detecting the screws that are just under the surface of the countertop so if you check the countertop first with the pen with the pendulum to see if there's something there your body is responding to you can actually move over to a different part where there's different part of the countertop or table where there are no screws because that will interfere with the readings that you're getting now the balanced pairs 
think of a scale that goes up and down just a regular weighing scale uh, these are how these are paired up calcium is paired with magnesium sodium is paired with potassium and if I misspell any of these I'm sorry zinc is paired with copper chromium is paired with sugar and I am even now testing anions paired, paired with cati cations negative ion charges paired up with positive ion charges now it's important to know these balances because if you increase the calcium level in your body you may have to increase the magnesium level also in your body because they they want to stay in balance and down the list goes you cannot really look at one item without looking at its pair because these the body is going to want to keep them in balance now here's where you run into some troubles of, of a misreading because a high cation lifestyle high stress a lot of acid which is uh, positively charged not good for you um, also tends to raise your copper levels copper is very acidic in the body and because this is so uh, harmful to the body the body will take a certain amount of calcium and dedicate it to buffering this copper and the other acids you are consuming which means that you may do a test on calcium and the body may say the ion reading may say that you have too much calcium in your body but actually the opposite may be true because most of that calcium might be dedicated to buffering the copper so just because the body says you have too much calcium does not mean that that calcium is bioavailable if you are living a high stress high acid lifestyle your copper may be high and your calcium may be dedicated to to buffering that copper so just because it reads that, that you're high in calcium doesn't mean that that is bioavailable you really need to do a tissue mineral analysis or have your blood work done to test to see if the calcium that is in your body is even being used because a lot of times the high copper the body will start dumping the calcium taking it out of the bones and you're gonna run into to a lot of uh, osteoporosis and other problems because the copper level is too high and the body is taking calcium simply to buffer that okay now let's go into testing products um, I often will have people say okay here, here is a, a product I want to know if it's too high in copper somebody you know is this somebody that may be struggling with acid doesn't need any more copper in their lives so so they may bring me something they may bring something to you that says is this high in copper well the first thing you can do for it is to hold the pendulum over it to see what your body is saying to it and let's assume that your body is saying yes to this that whatever is in there your body wants it now if you have the paint stick set up where this comes in so healthy is you take your other hand and you set it on the copper now your body's going to assume that because your hand is on the copper that that copper is in your body so if the if you hold this over the product and it's, and where it was going favorable if this is your favorable direction and you put your other hand on the copper and it suddenly goes unfavorable you know that there is copper in the body in, in the product and this is how the balances work if you want to know if something has calcium in it you can do the same thing let's say your body um, you want to test something for calcium and your body says negative you don't want it whatever is in here your body doesn't want it well it doesn't tell you exactly what's in it so you if you're looking for calcium you don't want to put your hand on calcium because if there is calcium in here it would continue to say I don't want it in that case you would put your hand on magnesium you're raising the magnesium level your body would say I need more calcium so if you touch the magnesium and suddenly it goes positive and says I need some more of this you know that there's calcium in that product and so by using the paired and knowing that the body is going to try to want to keep these balances you can actually test products because I have had, had a lot of times where people who have to really monitor things uh, people will say well oh a banana has got too much of this or that in it you know and and they'll say well does it really and we'll we'll check it out in the ion readings we'll say no it doesn't and so the person can actually even though 
somebody has told them, you know, you shouldn't eat this or that, we do the ion test on it and find out that yes, it is. this is actually a product that they can eat, that they can consume. So that's how you test with products. Now we go down here and here we're going to be testing for anions and cations. Now I try to keep my body balanced out. Most people are so uh, high in acid and high in the, in the uh, cations that their bodies will always say favorable to the, to the uh, anions, to the negative charge. And if I'm testing a, uh, if I'm testing people out, um, one of the things that I will have them do if I'm testing balances, I will make sure that their sodium is right, um, that they're not sodium deficient, because so often uh, testing a charge here, what the body wants will actually be shifted by the sodium level. So before I'm testing somebody for these levels, I will test them for that level there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I have used uh, for electrical purposes there are times where I'm doing electrical work and I'm dealing with DC wiring and I don't know if it's a negative wire or a positive wire so what I will do I will do the same thing for the balancing I will take a double A battery like this and I'll put my left hand on the positive charge of it well what that's gonna tell me let's say I have a wire here I wanna know if it's negative or positive so if I put my hand on the positive charge of this, my body is going to assume that I have got this already in, my, in me. It's not going to want this. So if I am testing the battery or testing a wire and I put my hand on the positive and suddenly this goes negative, I know that this is a negative wire. And then to double check it, I put my hand on the, pos or the, the, yeah, the negative side, which is the flat side here, and then if the pendulum suddenly goes positive, I know that this is, it's double checking to make sure, if I put, put my hand on the negative here, and it assumes that I'm flooded with this, and it goes positive, that it wants this thing, I know it's a positive line. So these are balanced the same way, and you can use these for testing DC currents. Now people have asked about how I have tested the coils. Now this is exactly how I have tested the coils. Um, the coils that are being used for the Organite devices, I tested, made different sizes, different shapes, and then I touched the, uh, the end of a battery, particularly using the positive end of the battery, and found out that it was this size and this spacing and this shape that gave me the strongest anion charge because the pendulum just went nuts over it because I had flooded myself with cations from this end of the battery the body wanted this really really bad and then if I flip this over in the other direction I'm still touching the cation side of the battery here the body did not want this so I knew that the cations were coming out this side and the anions were coming out this side and then I also tested the spacing and the shapes and this is how I determined that it was the quarter inch spacing on the wires that would give it the strongest output and this is also when I was doing distance testing I would uh, had this um, with on a little bit of a um, steel wool and I had strapped it to a tree and I went about a quarter mile away or excuse me almost a half mile away and in a parking lot and I had this down by my side and I walked through the parking lot and when I walked into the field that this was generating this thing started going positive and I so I started stepping back and I stepped out of the field and then it was going just neutral again and so I was able to detect from a distance of course I had to have a battery in my hand and keep my finger on the positive so that I was so that I was receptive to the uh, ion field when I stepped into it but this is how I was able to detect the size and the shape and this came out very very helpful because I even ordered a ion meter a $50 ion meter from Amazon and it could not detect the ions coming out of here and it couldn't detect the ions coming out of there. It was only made for big ion chargers, uh, ion air purifiers. But so anyhow, as a quick review here, this is how the, the pendulums work. 
Now you can test a product six inches through plastic or glass. If it's a frozen object, remember, put your other hand on it, thaw it just a little bit so you can test it. This also works for testing minerals, vitamins, and allergens. You could take a child or an animal uh, in your hands or touch them and then use your other hand for testing. Uh, and remember, this is, this is just a red flag thing. This will tell you if it's something that you need to, to pursue further through a doctor. Um, I would not use this as the final analysis because as we discussed before, if your copper levels are high, your calcium levels are going to read really weird because they may be reading very, very high, but you might not be getting any of it. Um, similar things are going to occur here. Um, you may be getting a lot of sugar, but if you've got a high acid diet, a high cation charge, high copper, you're probably inundated with, uh, with um, yeast. And the yeast is going to be eating this up. The candida albicans will, will flood your body and the candida albicans will be eating all your sugar. And You can actually have low blood sugar even though you're consuming a lot of it. And the reason for that is the candida is getting to it before you can get to it. So just because your body reads high in sugar doesn't mean that you're able to assimilate the sugar that you're getting. You may have the parasite candida albicans swallowing it all up for you. So this just gives you a ballpark figure of what to work with. And here again too with the anions and cations, this is good for checking out DC power. It's good for checking out of uh, battery charges because most people are not ion neutral. Most people are are uh, strong in the in the uh, the positive charges and so their body's going to give a negative reading to this end and a positive reading to that end because the body's going to want to balance it out here but so here is how it works practically and again I re reiterate this we are not using this to test for spiritual things we're not predicting the future we're not predicting using this to try to find your soulmate we're not using this to to contact your dead aunt Martha or a medium or any spirits we're all all we are doing with this is we're wanting to see how the macro ion signature is interfacing with the uh, with the uh, the synapse of your arm and the pendulum is going to tell you if there is a synchronization if there is a lopsidedness with the amount of right hand movements compared to the left hand movements as far as whether your body wants something or doesn't want something so thank you for listening. The pendulum was also the means by which I was able to discover the uh, fields that surround the cones and, and pyramids. Because I keep myself ion neutral, I could determine by touching the end of a battery here and then testing this that there was an anion spray that was coming out I shouldn't say spray an anion ribbon that was coming out of the end of this and because I was ion neutral and stay ion neutral the pendulum would not show favorable without touching a battery so when I held a pendulum over it and found a very very strong favorable reading I realized that there was another force at play here which was not anions and when I tested the bottom side of it and there was a very negative a very negative ion or a very negative ion reading that was coming off of it I knew it was not cations again because I'm ion neutral but there is another force that is forming at the base of these devices and using the pendulum I was able to determine the dimensions of this force I was able to to determine the intensity of the force and I was also able to track the ribbon that was coming out of here there, there's anion spray or anions that are coming out of here and there's a a band that holds it together into a tight ribbon where it does not um, dissipate like a like a spray and I was also able to track it to its targeting it was by the use of a pendulum now I know other people that are that are able to use the pendulums for other things but they cannot detect the uh, the fields that are coming out of these cones and, and pyramids but for some reason I'm able to detect it and the body is very very favorable to the field coming out of here and very unfavorable to the collector field that radiates out the base it was also by doing this that I could determine that if this thing was at shooting at a target that was off at a distance that it would dissipate halfway through here that it would come off this way and so when I was trying to figure out the correct shape uh, more bang for your buck the smallest 
most accurate shape to get this effect between the two fields and the anion ribbon that's coming out of it I was able to using the pendulum to come down to this shape which I was able to determine would uh, was the least amount of material for the maximum amount of output and so it was by using of use of the pendulum that it exposed the fields the uh, collector field that that radiates from the base of these things and the distributor field that comes out the top and also to track the anions and also at the target I was able to detect when I put potassium under here and I was fired it at a target I was able to pick up potassium ions at the target so I it was through the use of a pendulum that I discovered also that these things move the anions or particles of the items that are below them also we determined that the uh, content of the cone or pyramid was very important because it also atoms from it ended up at the target so if you want something that's going to be helpful to people you don't want to be injecting them with resins there still are a few mysteries to be solved but it was with the use of a pendulum that I was able to track the fields to track the, the where the uh, the devices were going and um, so anyhow, strange science, strange things to learn. Thank you for listening. Okay, let me show you here. This is our stick. It's just a piece of plywood that's cut long. Here's where a painter stick would be really nice, especially for a five gallon bucket. And here are in this drawer some of the pendulums that we use. That's a fishing bobber. It has a little bit of a weight on the bottom of it. You don't need that weight. Here's a couple of fancy crystals from a chandelier. My wife likes fancy things. There's another one. Just a sun catcher for the window. These things work really good. A little bit of fishing string or thread fine for these. Yeah, we even get a little... <laughs> ah, that's pretty. Anyhow, here's the stick. We've got calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, zinc, copper, iron, chromium, manganese. And a person can also set up a stuff with a stick with things like phosphorus, um, excuse me, sulfur, and um, vitamins and stuff on it so you can test those. And remember that cheap vitamins probably will not test. And here's the countertop we often do testing on. Here's the area here where we have the screws that come up from the bottom side of it where we have to avoid that area because we get the body will pick up the uh, the metals that are in there. And let me just show you really quickly how I use these. And notice that I keep it nice and tight. We're going to see what's going on with calcium here. My body does not want calcium. See, I just put my fingers down and I can stop it. See, magnesium. My body does want magnesium. Put the fingers down, stop it. And remember that these go in pairs. So, if the body wants one, it will probably not want the other one. Sodium. Eh, kind of neutral on sodium. I assume, therefore, that potassium is going to be neutral. Zinc, let's see what zinc says here. It's a no, but it's kind of a weak no. Let's see, copper. A yes, but a weak yes. Let's see what iron says. No to iron, that's good. And that's a strong one. I've been getting a lot of iron in, um, in my foods and juices and stuff. Chromium. Neutral. Manganese. Yes. Manganese has a real odd relationship with copper. They're like twisted sisters. They often read identical to each other. And copper is a bugger because if you have high copper, copper will tend to displace manganese. It will tend to displace iron. It will tend to displace zinc. And it will tend to take um, 
calcium and make the calcium dedicate itself to buffering the copper. And so copper is a real bugger and it's a big problem in, in societies where there's a lot of stress and acidic diets. Um, but calcium, this was, and <laughs> this is, I put this together, just threw it together about 20 years ago. We just uh, took uh, like supplements and put them on here and then used scotch tape around it to uh, tape them on. A lot of the uh, supplements have dissolved over the years, but the, the, the powder is still in there. But like sodium, I mean, this is just table salt that's in here. Potassium, this is just a piece of a potato, a flake of a, a sliver of a potato. Zinc copper is a little bit of a uh, copper uh, tubing that I cut and then smashed down flat. Iron was a piece of metal that I just took outside and smashed it flat. And so this thing is very, very easy to make. And this one I can take and uh, take it to somebody's house um, if we want to test them. And I can take them by the left hand and I can take the pendulum over it to see wh where they're at. Or if, um, if we're dealing with somebody who is having health problems, I can often just have them send me one single hair. I have them uh, tape it to a 3x5 card with the, about an inch of the, uh, the root section uh, out from the tape. And then I can um, either put my hand on these and then test the root end of the hair or put my hand on the root end of the hair and test these. So with one single strand of hair, I can actually get a reading as far as like what person is high and low in. And then I will write on the 3x5 card what they're high and low in. And then I will have my wife double double check it because sometimes one person can get an off you know an off reading and then if she gets something different then we'll both go back and double check to make sure that we're getting it right because sometimes too the hair may be contaminated with uh, with dyes or shampoos or things like that but this is the stick we've been using this for 20 years it's so funny scotch tape whip the thing together <laughs> it still works fine one of these years I might replace it but it gets used about as often as all the other tools in the utility drawer here. So that's where it belongs. And we take our pendulums and we put them out of the way because we <laughs> a lot of people would not understand if they saw these sitting out on the counter what these are all about. And so we keep that tucked away in there. And thank you for watching.